Hey guys, Billy Ray here. How you guys doing? I'm doing fine. Doing fine. Um, let's talk about uh, the the DNC convention. And um, I pop my head in and then get in there and see what's going on. And uh, I got some things. Um, since the DNC uh, wanted to have their little show in Chicago. Um, and... Um, they did what they wanted to say, so I'm going to say what I need to say. First thing of all, um, this is a complete sham. Um, millions of people voted for Joe Biden. They kicked him off the ticket. They, they showed him the door. They ran the bus over him. They put in Kamala Harris. Nobody voted for Kamala Harris. This is supposed to be uh, a representative um, democracy. But the DNC so pick and choose who they wanted. So they picked this chick who's a hoe and made her the heir apparent because of the, the, the money. And, and I understand that's, that's how the game is played. Um, but two years ago, um, she was considered a liability, a big liability, more than than, than Jin Joe, uh, because people didn't like her. They thought she was stupid, and now they kicked Joe Biden to the curb, and they now Kamala Harris is the is the next thing going out, and um, I'm sorry, I, I can't, I can't. <laughs> No, it's not right. It's not right. So, here's the article right here. Uh, Kamala Harris accepts the Democratic nomination. And she says, the future is always worth fighting for. Okay. All right. That's what you say. All right. I'm going to say, okay, yeah, but... You've been in policy, you've been in charge for the last three and a half years, and stuff is messed up. Stuff is messed up. Um, people don't have enough jobs. I've been unemployed uh, since uh, October, and I just got a job in May. That's 10 months. It's 10. Okay. Um, I can't feed my family. I almost lost my house twice. Um, and she's running around um, saying, you know, the economy is good. Joe Biden's saying that the economy is good. My mortgage, my mortgage went up three damn times, okay, in the last year, okay, my mortgage payment, okay. I just wrote a check for was 476 now it's 490 okay when these jokers came in the office uh three years ago i was only paying 334 dollars now i'm paying close to 500 uh, and gas is high uh, i gotta go to gas gotta gotta work gas is high because they want to put people they want people they're forcing people to get evs I'm not going to get an EV. The government can screw themselves. And the government wants to take control everything. And that's what she wants. She's a straight up socialist. She wants the government to control everything. And I'll, um, and I'll be damned. Um, that's the reason why we have this, comp this, this um, republic. That's the reason why we rejected the king of England. Uh, so, so America was going to be its own thing, where the man, and not the, is the individual has the power, instead of the government. That's the reason why we have uh, a bicameral government, so the government can't be in charge of everything. And and she wants to do some socialist stuff where the government controls everything, controls the means of. Of production controls the means of how we working government control of uh, of everything and that's not right that's not how 
it's supposed to be. We don't we don't want that. But the Democrats have converted from being a, a republic to straight up socialism. And don't let the mothers tell you something different. They want to control everything. They want the government to give you everything. And, and they control everything. They produce everything and they control everything. Capitalism is going to be gone. She wants us to do some socialist and bull crap. And I'll be damned if I'm going to let that happen. No. And, um, and I was looking at some of my uh, other brothers and sisters. Um, black brothers and sisters and the first one I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about um, um, famous person okay and you we all know who she is so here we go yep that's her that is Oprah Winfrey um, worth She's a billionaire. She's worth billions of dollars. And the thing is with, with her is that uh, she's she's she has her own money. She owns lots of property now, and she has this, that, and the other. Um, her she doesn't need to pay anything, so she. She has her own gated community. She has it all now. So, um, so she is cool. Um, but for other peons like us, where are we going to do this? I remember, I'm going to tell you some stories here. Um, I met Oprah. Um, me and my mother met Oprah back in 19... 1975, when she was in Baltimore, uh, she was a starving reporter, cup reporter. She used to do the one o'clock news on Channel 13. And my mother and I, we were down in Lexington Market. She was doing a report on um, on the local markets. And uh, my mom and me, we, we met Oprah. And who would know that this woman would turn out to be a billionaire back in the day? <clears throat> she was only she was an hourly worker, and she, my mother, we was watching her, and she stole two apples and put them in her purse without paying for them. But now she ain't got to steal. But back in the day, she was stealing. Yes, Oprah stole, and I saw it. Bam, bam. Me and my mother, we saw it. We didn't call her out, but she was stole. She was stealing. Fast forward. Uh, about 20, 25 years of working in the clinic and I met some of Oprah's um, co-workers who, you know Oprah she, they told me Oprah would be stealing people's food from the, from the lunch from the lunch um, from the lunch um, cabinet, cabinet she'd be going into people's lunches and stealing people's food because she was hungry mm -hmm. She ain't hungry no more, but she was in there stealing food. Uh, one lady told me that she gave Oprah uh, lunch money because she didn't have any lunch money. Well, I think she has plenty of month lunch money now, and then she didn't pay her either. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to call foul on Oprah because uh, she. I'm not hating on her. I'm glad she got it. that's what she has, but I'm not going to fall in line to this to this bull crap uh, where I gotta uh, fall in line with the Democratic Party because they're picking they picking stuff for me. I don't want that. I don't want that. No. No. I'm gonna say no. And it's not right. It's not right. Definitely. So I'm gonna say no to Oprah Winfrey. I'm gonna say no to that. Okay. So now um I'm gonna. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is Barack Obama. Yes, uh, our, our favorite, our, our favorite African. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go with this. Hold on a second here. 
Let me just queue up everything up here and then we're ready to go. Because for the first thing I'm gonna say, this is Barack Obama's um, first, I guess I say his first time back to Chicago when he left there, uh, and, and when when Trump left. Okay, so how many years is that? Uh, Trump left. Well, uh, Trump became president uh, four years. So it's gonna be eight years. So it's been eight years uh, since he left office and and I'm not sure if you guys heard about what's going on in Chicago where thousands of young black men or black children um, uh, get killed every day and this joker this joker right here right here ain't got nothing to say He's on with his life. He's living up in the Hamptons. He's living uh, in a gated community. He's living, uh, he has a beach front home where he ain't got to see no niggas. <laughs> I'm going to put it right there. You ain't got to see no niggas, okay? Ain't no niggas living in Martha's Vineyard. You know who lives up there? The rich. I'm rich, bitch. Yeah. Ain't no niggas up there. Ain't nothing. And then he's gonna. Uh, then he has. Um, he has a multi-million-dollar contract with Netflix. Uh, him and him and his wife. You know, they they doing pretty good. They're living pretty high and hard. But in Chicago, where the people he's supposed to be protecting and the people he so love, they're catching hell. And he ain't doing a damn thing. He's up there kissing and bobbing. With the rich, with the rich, while well, well, his his people, his adopted home in Chicago, is burning, burning, and he gonna come up here and stage and and talk this BS about hope and change and and, and uh, Kamala Harris is gonna be the next thing since sliced bread and that he's fired up. I'm gonna call bullshit on you. I'm gonna call bullshit on you because you're full of shit. You always been full of shit, Barack Obama. Always, I never liked you because you were a chump. That's right, and I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out as a chump, punk ass bitch. Cause that's all he was. He was. He was. He's a fucking socialist too. His daddy was a socialist, and he's a socialist. And Kamala Harris is a socialist. So this fits in line. He's a, and these people want to change America. Um, by bringing all these fucking illegals in here, um, we spending all this damn money for these knuckleheads, uh, and they they come all over, and they want and they put a strain on us. Medicare, what Medicare? Ain't gonna be none. If these fools win, we go, we're done. And Barack Obama is the chief architect. Him and. Joe Biden hate each other. They hate each other. So these two knuckleheads are just gonna fight it out. And we're gonna be the people who are gonna get fucked over. 
you're going to get fucked over. Yes. So Barack Obama, uh, I'm going to call bullshit on you because for one, you're a fake ass brother. Two, you're not supposed to be, you're supposed to be with your people um, who your, your hometown in Chicago, you don't go there and you don't say anything while, while your brothers and sisters are killing each other. And you ain't, and you can't go in there and say, look, people, let's bring this along, you know. No, because there ain't no niggas, ain't no money with the niggas. And he's living up there in the high life um, at Martin's Vineyard talking about the hope and change. Yeah, you got the hope and change. Yeah, yeah. We got the shaft. That's exactly right. So, Barack Obama can kiss my bumper. Exactly right. So, going back to my original speech here is that the DNC, I'm not going to be a straight up socialist. No, I'm not. And I'll be damned if I'm going to vote for some bull crap like that. People, please wake up. Um, Republicans are not the answer to your, to your problem. However, they're not the cause of it. The cause of it is the DNC. The DNC, been had, for like the last 20 years, we've had a lot of Democratic people, president, who've been in charge for the last 12 years. And the, and the country has gone straight down the last 12 years. And Trump came back and it brought us back up. But these fools, no, no, no. But I'm going to call bullshit on both of them. And I'm not voting for them. And I encourage you guys um, to look at the future for you. Okay. We're going to be signing off. <laughs>